Today we are having my mentor with us. And uh, by continuing this privilege, I would like to introduce today our chief guest, Honorable Dr. T. P. Shashi Kumar. He is MSc, PhD, MS, MBA, LLB, MPhil. A space scientist for 20 years. He has also served at Cesaro as chief, a mathematician testing and image proceeding educationalist, director of Esprit Meditation. He is also the chairman and CEO of Shikta Janana World Social Craft Foundation, a Bhagavad Gita Akkad, the editor of World Yoga Community at United Nations and Associates. Chief Research Office Management Team Member at IDYM, President of Research Council IAU, Honorary Doctorate in Peace from Egyptian Ambassador Care 21. He has researched for one student and youth and equal number of participants. He is a former director of the Cabinet Secretary Department of Government of India, New Delhi. He had served as activist as uh, at Ahmedabad Bangalore, mathematics and management professor, he was an excellent uh, mathematics and management professor. Late he was uh, in USA student basic scholar. He is a student of S T and passed to his special and so on. This is my extreme privilege to have him today as our last speaker. After a very schedule, uh, uh, very grateful to you, you had uh, you spare some time us after having a very busy schedule. You are being here today at the time with us. Really very thank you, uh, thanking you, sir, for uh, for for this. With this, I also would to add some of our. Uh, yeah, some audience here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So this is my have you stop saying that experience sharing at the foundation would like to welcome you to the of team and with your introduction, I would like to set you live uh, by yourself. I would also like to uh, report that can you please mute yourself? <laughs> Please mute yourself. There is an option of mic. Okay. So uh, now I just would like to listen, Dr. Uh, T. P. Shashi Kumar Ji. Please sir, tell us something about. Namaskaram, Aishwarya Pratap Singh. I know that. You have studied about me and you also have made a beautiful introduction. Thank you for that. I have been looking at what you are doing. You are getting associated, interviewing a lot of people, spreading the message of knowledge and love. I think 2021 was a great year for many people who are very active on online. And I found you are one among them who enjoyed the uh, COVID problems because definitely. Uh, definitely. Uh, that's, uh, so, uh, if uh, I would like to ask, uh, many of the time I uh, had worked as chief in many of departments. So what is your experience in terms of management, better management? Uh, uh, 
sir are you getting what did you ask uh, i am asking like many of times aapne kaam kiya hai kai departments mein as chief yeah or head so what is your experience in terms of better management what is your definition of better management see um, the word management is a very very uh, low terminology to be used i think your mic is uh, echoey yeah the management is a very bad terminology if i don't know cooking what do i do i manage cooking if i have to uh, there are five vehicles but six applications at six places i have to go or six people want to go so what do you do you add one person with one of them and say manage somehow drop him and then go so management is a very uh, confused lack of facility how do you make things happen i you asked me a question and i don't know how to answer what do i do i managed my show by answering something so management is a very bad quality i don't manage i do things so generally people say i am in the higher management but ias indian administrative service they are not managing what do they do they administer the another bigger terminology is called the administration assume we don't use the word managing medicine we use the word administering medicine what does it mean you have five drops of medicine to be given in a bottle you have 15 drops so three people can be given five drops five drops five drops 15 three people can get a drops but assume by mistake by giving drops one of the drop has fallen down do you manage by giving instead of five drops will you give four drops and say manage it no you have to open another bottle and then give five because the dose is five so what is administration administration is providing everything what you can and it is higher than management so dr tps would have been post in different place and the terminology is manage even i was head of the department of a management uh, uh, academically we call it as management the mba but if you expand mba business management is it called a business management yeah then it is not a management because actually you have to business administration so that is why it is called a mba administration the word is called administration master of business administration that is mba actually there is no word called management but still we call mba people as management teachers management students department of management that is because olden days facilities were less but in today's world we are high facility lot of opportunity lot of things are around us we don't have to manage so what we do is create lot of facility and make people feel happy about it i think work will come so giving good opportunity how do you make people to perform good opportunity second one good attitude oh i want to work that feeling should be given so give good opportunity give good feeling and then give the required skill i want to come on to this video conference so what should i do i must be good in technically and i must be good in my knowledge so that is the skill so create a skill create opportunity create the attitude if three things are given administration becomes very simple so it is not management it is higher than management which can be called as administration that's where i am involved that's that's really 
really amazing. Uh, totally appreciate the answer. Really amazing because I am uh, totally confused. Uh, I've written like other degrees. I would say that MS for master's surgery, PhD. But uh, when we are talking about MBA, so that's definitely I'm confused in that term. And that's what you automatically sorted out that uh, confusion. Uh, with this, I would like to ask you, tell us something about your childhood. What kind of student are you? Are you a serious student or are you like... I am, I am from a small village. I am, a, I am from a remote village where development did not come when I was a young boy. I am from Kerala, the northern part of Kerala, where I belong to a family who were landlords. So we had very, 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 very large acres of land. But unless we work, we cannot create food. Money was not there. Business is not there. We have large land. So we have a lot of resources, but probably not that useful. Unless people make things, it doesn't happen. The temple is built by my grandfather. School is built by my grandfather. In my childhood, I have seen a small hospital. And the doctors who come from different districts, they stay in my brother's house. Because there are no lodges, no hotels, no such things are not there. So we are from a very remote village. When I was studying for masters only, electricity came. When I was doing my PhD in Bangalore, telephone came. And therefore, we have not been as lavish as people think today. I have seen a electricity switch box. Putting on a uh, switch in a, for a light or a fan, I did when I was in 7th class. Going to 40 kilometers away from my village. First time I attended a telephone when I went outside to my brother's place where... Uh, th that was my childhood. So no television, no TV. The TV I saw when I was in MSc. First time television was seen when Indira Gandhi got assassinated. That was the time when I seen the television first time. What it? So you can imagine that the situation. Therefore you don't know the world. Therefore you don't have big dreams. Examination is not a very serious thing. If you don't attend exam probably you will fail. But if you fail, also not a big problem. Because in my classes, there were people when I was in 8th class, 7th class and all, I had students who failed 4 years. So up to 8 years, you fail 4 years. That means every year you fail once, twice. Failure in schools was a very common thing. Today, failure is a big thing. Right? When I was a good student, brilliant, maybe my brothers, I lost my father when I was 4 years old. So I was one of the most loved children in my whole village because our tradition was good. So when I was in 7th class, I was posted in a very good school. That was in a city, very little far from the 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers today may be half an hour drive. But those days it is two hours drive because roads are not good. I am from a hilly terrain, mountainous area. So it takes long time. The bus starts at 8 o'clock, 9.30 I will be in my school. So one and a half hour morning. I enjoyed my travel because that's the first time I got into a bus. I never used to be very regular in the classrooms. I used to be out enjoying my time. So what happened after my seventh class was over? Headmaster gave me a transfer certificate and said get out from this school. I was 27th rank all throughout in seventh class in every examination. I was one of the worst students in that school. But then I came, came back to my own village school. I became ashamed of my situation. I went to a higher school and then thrown back. So I did not have friends with me. So I was alone. But then still I didn't have much interest in studies and all that. Plus one, plus two was called pre-degree those days. Pre-degree. Before degree, a pre-program. That was also done by universities. Not like today in school program. That also I did not do well. First year I failed in every examination. Second year, that means 11th class I failed in all exams. 12th class somehow I got a pass mark. But then my brother was a professor of zoology. He said you cannot study mathematics. 
you can study either language malayalam that was my mother tongue that is the only thing which is you are fit for no science higher studies and all not for you i will give you an admission for in that is called third group art subject but i said no because he told me i cannot study mathematics i told him i am going to study mathematics and that only made me to become very very stubborn a very good student very serious then i became a very good student for bsc i got maybe very good marks msc i became second rank mphil i got first rank mphil and phd i finished in 3 years in mathematics and i got a job in space department so my childhood was not very 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 no um, thrilling no it was thrilling but not very fancy maybe i did not realize what is trouble in life because i enjoyed the trouble also but in today's standard if you look at it my childhood was very bad bad student very poor student not brilliant not recognized by many people but i that was not a big problem for me because i did not compare with somebody else right i enjoyed i enjoyed my childhood with all the mistakes what i can do in my life i finished my childhood itself yeah. that's really good and that's uh, something which uh, you know we are away from because uh, nowadays as you had mentioned to me uh, in your friends that really in nowadays education is something like a boom over a child and uh, we are totally stuck in it so what is your strategy for education because uh, you uh, you have research over education and millions of students so what is according to your that research what uh, tell us something about strategies of education of learning and one more question that i have is uh, as we students we are having a lot of complications in terms when we when we listen board examination so that is something which troubled all of us whether uh, the student from uh, jammu kashmir to kanyakumari we all are absolutely we just for, like board examination is something which is a troubled situation for all of us uh, so tell us uh, some strategies for for uh, overcoming these uh, uh, these sort of problems see i i don't have to define what is education because there are great people in this country in eastern philosophy bharatiya shastram like vivekananda i adore him so much he says education is man making if only human being people like us have the ability to learn only you can talk to me from sitting in a far off place we can get connected today because we are human being animals they only see only hear very close by surroundings their parents their own mother siblings along with them they can live and learn as human being anybody's experience we can document from anywhere to anywhere we can share knowledge right so we human being can learn what is the difference between learning of a human being and learning of an animal animal not only learn they understand why do they learn because they want to practice it what do human being learn we learn so much which can never be practiced that is one of the fault of our education system just because we have a capacity to learn many things we did not use it for applications in our life so most of our knowledge did not transform into what is called a skill development therefore today what people speak in education a education has to be skill development actually it is not today's requirement all together all the time education needs to be skill development but we have forgotten that that is one of the drawbacks we know physics but if somebody ask question we can answer it but we did not understood the basics of physics we did not understand why is it happening 
Nobody is going to ask that question. Given a question, you must answer it. So examination has become not testing the understanding, but testing the brain. How much you can capture, how much you can copy. And if somebody has an ability to by heart, we call the use the word by heart, right? But I keep saying, everybody keeps saying, don't by heart, don't by heart. I keep saying, learn by heart. Don't learn by heart. Don't mug up things. Don't put it in the brain and then put it down. I keep asking a lot of students soon after examination, if I give same question again, you will say, oh, I don't know, I forgot everything. But examination hall, you can write. Why is it happening? Because once it is written, you keep cleaning your brain. Because you think whatever you are learning is for writing examination. Anyway, it is not useful after that. Correct. So our learning has become only for examination. That is one biggest fault we are doing. Therefore, I was teaching at the MBA, BBA. Last, I was a professor in KL University in Hyderabad as mathematics professor. So what do I teach them? I have a paper called a Campus to Corporate. How do a people from the campus can get a job in corporate companies? So what I was, I was teaching their logical reasoning, analytical skill, mathematical ability, reasoning ability, data analysis. All these are 7th class, 8th class, 9th class mathematics. Actually, high school, whatever you are studying, if you know that you are not doing mathematics, actually there is a mathematics inside the mathematics. Why are you studying? Why are you studying geography? Why are you studying history? What Akbar did? Why are you studying is it has any relevance today? We are not teaching that. Teachers are not teaching that. They will tell you this is important. You should get marks for that you are studying. But actually for every subject study, there is an objective and scope. Why are you studying? What is the objective of study? If you understand the objective, the learning becomes interesting. And if questions are put in such a style to test whether the student understood it perfectly well, the question will not be repeated every year. Every teacher will have an ability to make a difficult question. So today most of the questions are very simple because last five years, actually students need not study anything to get good marks. Last five years question paper, you liquid it, learn every question answer, then you can get good marks. Not even in school studies, even in highest MBBS or MBA or BTEC, MTEC, everywhere. Old question paper, repeat it the same way. Actually, examination should not be like that. Examination become thrilling only when your testing, two words are used, testing and examination, which is very famous in school academics, college academics. It is also famous in medical system. Doctors will test you and then they will decide what disease you have. They do a urine examination. So examination and testing is a common word in education and as well as in medical science. In medical science, what doctors will do? They find some parameters are wrong. Then they will treat you well, make you perfect, do another test and say, oh, your disease is clear. You are fit. Now you can go home. But in school, what happens? Suppose you fail, your parameters are bad. Mathematics, you got only 10%. Science, only 20%. The teachers will scold you. Parents will scold you. Can you imagine if you are getting fever, doctors scold you, parents scold you, will your fever will go? Actually, you need to get a treatment. So what is education system? Education system should be, testing should be done to find out what is wrong and then give a clear medicine better learning, make you to understand, do a written test again, ask a lot of questions, do a diagnosis and find out you are good and then promote to grade 3 to grade 4, grade 4 to grade 5, grade 5 to grade 7. Like that when you go, oh, you understood everything. Today, when you have a disease, you are transferring to some other doctor. From that, you are transferring to some other doctor. No doctor is treating you. 
and you get a very chronic bigger disease with a lot of disease so our education system has become transferring problems but not solving problems but i keep saying examination hall is a big very great place you know why generally when you sit in classroom you have to sit beside only examination hall you get a lot of place to sit like you are in a higher position prime minister will not sit three people will sit together in a single place will not happen prime minister always have a bigger seat similarly you get a bigger power position when you are writing examination because you are given a bigger seat correct so examination you are the vvip when teachers call you you have to go but in exam hall you can call the teacher you can tell come here and teacher will come beside you and you can knock at the table and say come then the teacher will come and ask you like a chef in a hotel what you want correct so your teacher will become your subordinate your teacher will become your servant and all the time teachers will give you notes you have to write you have to read now in the exam hall whatever i am writing who has to read teachers have to read so how are you writing exam you read i am going to write if 10 questions are given if teacher ask you only answer 5 what do i used to do i write all the 10 and say you read and decide which is good so this is the right time to take revenge against the teachers i keep saying so examination is like an enjoyment i am sure everybody will pass if you understood perfectly the way in you write will be different from you learning something so i always believe a student has to understand things and write in examination and make teachers to understand that i am a better student if you learn and write you will become an average student you get lot of marks such people they will pass exam they will get good marks but they will not become real researchers real uh, cu curious people creative people you need to be a creative person in writing examination studying doing things and that is what is essential so that attitude setting in thrilling experience have to be given to students and i make it to all my children i will keep saying don't worry exam is not a big problem understanding is a big problem so that is what is essential correct that's really amazing and before i continue my questions i would like to uh, ask uh, lakshya lakshya has joined us today so lakshya aapke jo bhi questions the you can ask to sir actually he is having some of the questions from space science he is very interested in uh, space and all so i just ask him that uh, whatever the, your question is you can ask to him and he will answer so lakshya now you can uh, ask your every question please uh, unmute yourself <laughs> Hello sir. sir. Nice to meet you. And my question is what is black hole? Yeah, I don't know what Lakshya does and two things. I don't like the word hello. I don't like the word sir. Right. Hello is hello is Alexander Graham Bell's girlfriend's name. so you need not address me as hello and sir is a title given by britishers actually i don't have that sir title from british okay what is a black hole is a very common host question many people think that if you are a student of uh, science you have some interest you should always think about a black hole let me ask one question how is it uh, matter to you what black hole is is it going to affect any of our knowledge that is a common question which i have but still asking that question i must give an answer correct see we have a visibility even with a telescope when you see something we can see a light where light is not getting reflected irradiation doesn't happen radiation doesn't happen reflection doesn't happen in some places and therefore that place is seen as black what is black absence of light is black so when you look at the space generally space is black but there are some places where there is a light around it 
and the center there is a black and that is what is called as black hole and what is black hole it can be a planet it can be a very specific material reflected from another place it can be a dust particle which is not radiating no irradiation comes it absorbs lot of absorbs lot of light and therefore around that you can see light there there is no light so it is not a very static place where it is keeping because the universe itself is not static it keeps on moving therefore shape also moves the look also can change assume that you are looking a cylinder from straight on top it looks like a circle but if you are looking from a different angle it looks like a ellipsoid sort of a thing so similarly the black hole also have a different shape different texture different style the color also need not to be same assume the distance is same the disturbance is same it looks like whitish bluish and if the distance is too far it looks like reddish so you have different colors in which you have a black color within that and that is what is called a black hole so it is a big study which can be done in the space how light and no light situation is visible for people so there are lot of fantastic things people like to picture it look at it show it so it's a beautiful thing like a sunset is very beautiful for photographers black hole is a beautiful thing for all the astronomy or space and the higher space people who do research and look at such places what is inside this black hole that can be any material which is slightly different from the neighboring places so people say that it has got high gravity if something goes inside it can get absorbed because material is different if it can absorb all the light energy and nothing is reflected it can also absorb different things so that's a basic uh, hypothesis people come to nobody has seen nobody has uh, have totally understood it so it's like a hypothesis it's like a science uh, myth which we can create talking about uh, all the black holes today the knowledge itself is a black hole i keep saying the knowledge about black hole itself is a black hole because we did not understood it totally i think lakshya must be happy uh lakshya i i feel that you tell uh, absolutely satisfied with the answer so uh, if you have any other question then you can raise it thank you for answering and my one question is uh, what is a black drop star black black are you uh, asking for black rock star black drop star t w a r f drop um okay so uh, he will definitely um answer see okay uh, see i think uh, uh, most of the people have a uh, wrong concept dr tps is a space scientist <laughs> correct but space scientist do not know anything about space i answered the question about the black hole because of my general knowledge as a space scientist we don't know anything about space that department who knows about space is called astronomy department what do space department do we keep satellite on the top and look to the ground so what space scientist as an i know i know about earth more than space you understood what i'm saying so actually the knowledge about space and astrophysics is not my knowledge but i have got lot of interest in the general knowledge therefore i know all these subjects uh, lakshya was asking about the dwarf w a uh, d w a r f correct so the dwarf star star itself means a light source and when dwarf means what dwarf means the size is very small we have got avatar 10 avatars 
Vaman avatar is a dwarf. That means size is very small. So what is dwarf star? It is a star which is very small. So what will happen? When it comes close to earth, close to sun solar system, it will become visible. When it is very far, it will not become visible. Or like stars, generally we say tinkle, tinkle, little star. It gives you a beautiful light source which is very far but we, it is very visible. What will happen to dwarf star? It will not be, if it is very small, too far, it will not be visible. So sometime it will not be visible. Sometime it will be visible. So there are astronomy people who categorized star based on the size, based on its luminance. Luminance is the light intensity is very less. It's like a zero bulb. A bright 200 watt bulb and a zero bulb. If normal star is 200 watt bulb, your dwarf star is a zero watt bulb. Only light is there. No, oh, it is seen. Light is there. Bulb is there. But voltage is too less. That sort of a star is called a dwarf size. And size is also small. Luminance is small. When it is very far, it will not be visible. Got it? Yeah. In very short time, you explained it very well. Even I, I just never heard this term. And now uh, I have a proper knowledge about this term. So thank you very much. For a short, in a short period of time, you have explained very well. That's really, it's our privilege to have you today. This, uh, this is not. This is our extreme privilege. I would say that it's our privilege to have you with us today. Actually, my last thing is that uh, if you have any, uh, if you have any uh, scientific question, like uh, as uh, Dr. Shashi Kumar has mentioned, if you have any practical question or any formal question, then you can mention it. Otherwise, the question you are asking, they are Google based. So you may also get them from Google, but if you are having uh, any very curious question that is uh, uh, practically could be happen, so you can ask that only, right? Uh, do you have any such kind of question? No, I am, I am very happy with the lecture's question or the <laughs> question on star and question on planet. I am very happy, but I only wanted to tell, don't ask this to every space scientist. Correct? Because the knowledge about space need not be as you think. It's like going to a vegetarian restaurant asking for chicken biryani. Correct? <laughs> but don't worry. Dr. DPS uh, is with a lot of students. I have seen more than million students, million teachers, million parents in this country. I keep saying TPS is my name. Teachers, parents, students. TPS. Oh my Okay, so I like questions. Any question, I love them. When you have questions, I love you. And any subject you can ask me, not only in this interview. You can take my telephone number 9447437948 or search on internet Dr. TPS. Don't forget my name. Teachers, parents, students. Top police service because I was also into police. I was a scientist, so look at the temperature pressure second. You can you can ask me any question on any subject at any level, not necessarily in LKG level to go to up to PhD level. You ask me subject and questions on anything in this world, I love to learn. So always I look for asking some questions which I don't know. And if I don't know some questions, I love to get such questions. So I can say I can say with an excellent teacher or professor or mentor, you are also. A I am, I am a learner. When I don't get, a, say today morning, one of my cousin who is almost 70 years old, maybe 20 years elder than me or 20, maybe 18 to 20 years elder than me, she was a very, very senior person. She asked me a question and so many people will ask me questions on WhatsApp and I, I know the answer, but still I know there can be many more answers. So I keep learning. So today morning I have spent one hour on her question but most of the things I was looking for is there any better answer for this so I answered them so when I get questions I read a lot when I get some question I looked at it very carefully it is not that I don't know dwarf but still I want to explain it in a different style which will not be available in Google I am sure the way I explained people may not explain so when I explain in this style 
and when i talk to indians i will say we have vamana avatar which is a short avatar and dwarf is that that word have to be inside you so that i in, I, i induce that word inside you so that you will never forget that word a dwarf otherwise people will forget so my ability is the answer comes from my heart from my manas and to reach into your manas so i am a good teacher i love to be a good teacher than anybody else and therefore i improve my way of teaching i improve my way of looking at things i interpret it in different style based on I, that's why i wrote a book on education this is a book on education adaptive learning adaptive learning and teaching you can download from internet freely available it says how do you get adapted to your students how do you explain things in the way the students will understand care so there are ways of teaching i am i am a good teacher and i teach lot of teachers i was director for academic staff college under the university grants commission for 2 years almost 15 years back what did i do i make teachers to understand how do they make their knowledge available to the children so that they get knowledgeable it is not learning brain to brain it is from feeling to feeling so i love questions all questions any question from anywhere i love it yeah Ishwarya Pratap Singh has become so busy. Um, uh, I, uh, the, another question is that the, uh, that is one of the most common question in our generation particularly. So I am just rising a very common question uh, and the question is children in nowadays having so many of coachings and tuition from, uh, started from a uh, Uh, eighth or ninth standard to the twelfth for NEET and J to clear NEET and J examination. So uh, there are so many people. There are no uh, many audience here to uh, push, uh, to raise this question. But when I am in the conversation with uh, so many of the students, I just uh, something that I have understand it. Then this is only this. how can we clear need or j examination so this is at uh, the last question from the audience side for you what is any strategy according to you to clear need or j examination i don't know whether uh, the audience including aishwarya has seen the movie called the cheat india that's a beautiful movie which came last year don't miss that movie number 1 that will tell you how to pass because it's actually cheating okay number 2 there is i think a netflix series which came which is called the kota factory the kota is the place in rajasthan where so many people are going for coaching in india that is supposed to be the kota factory i am from kerala so generally what do people do Uh, 11th and 12th is passed immediately they join for another repeat batch they are called repeat batch they study the whole grade 11th and 12th class whatever they studied as questions they will do do you know they have teachers who prepare for neat and examination like this they have not chemistry teacher they have chapter 1 chemistry teacher chapter 2 chemistry teacher chapter 3 chemistry teacher every chapter wise they have teachers and what do they do they finish that chapter there <clears throat> they will prepare lot of questions and then make them to keep on repeating answers and prepare them for the examination that is because all of our competitive examination has become a big problem for most of the brilliant children it has become those who are rich Those who can get trained in this can get into the best institution. India's best institutions are IITs. All the examination, entrance examination, all the government best institutions they conduct a lot of competitive exams. 
and no private institution in india can compete with them but preparing to get into that government institutions there are a lot of private companies i don't call them as educational institution private companies who will make these children to compete with the lot of other people who are not as rich as them so education has become a big business this is the problem and do we have are we getting in the highest education system the brilliant children from india no i don't think the brilliant children need not to get admission so it is not a test for brilliance it is a test for how to memorize all the questions answer are given people make to understand and then do this examination business why iit professors are also thinking how can we really capture those people who don't memorize who have got real, real creativity research understanding how do we check them whatever new methodology they keep for making a good question paper next year again that will be copied by this copy cat uh, training people and then train them in that so it's a big the mouse and cat sort of a thing they create a beautiful new model for selecting children the other fellow will capture it and then make people to prepare and then compete for that okay so it is the fastness in which you can solve problem how much memory can be used that has become a normal entrance examination not even for admissions in the best uh, uh, institutions like uh, iit iisc jee all that it is also true for indian civil service ias and all that the memory is being tested therefore probably if you look at admissions which happens in abroad admissions in great universities in america they will ask you one paper which is called a, what is the paper called a sop statement of purpose what you want to study why do you want to study this and they will also interview you and when interview happens you will have to answer it in a very specific style the ability to analyze it all that need to be done if you are looking for admissions but we cannot do it in india because the number of people who are applying for that is big large number and that is a big process for selecting the best students so mark is one criteria you can imagine even if you get best marks in 10th 11th 12th but you don't get admission based on the marks so examination in schools has become irrelevant correct so therefore corporate schools corporate training centers coaching centers they don't teach 11th and 12th they teach only for the entrance exam and the examination for 11th and 12th in state government we become normal examination so say in andhra i am from hyderabad now andhra we have two set of institutions what is called chaitanya and another one is called narayana chaitanya and narayana they were competing each other so chaitanya sometime was very good for preparing for medical examination narayana was very good for uh, engineering admissions but they become together now so last year i was telling when covid became a very small disease which is spread when it started i was telling in hyderabad city this china disease because there was a rumor saying that it came from china i was telling in covid now people have been distanced social distance don't talk to anybody you have to be inside your house and study thoroughly and this china problem was there in hyderabad almost 10 years back that is called chaitanya narayana problem because both chaitanya entrance and narayana entrance is what is holding them 11th and 12th once you become 8th 9th 10th 11th and 12th for 5 years don't do anything just prepare you know in uh, hyderabad and all there are centers from 7th class they prepare for btech admission they are not worried about all the other subjects how to get for btech in iit so this has become a big disease so hyderabad had this china disease long back chaitanya narayana disease so i keep calling them all the je all such examinations are all like 
Chaitanya Narayana disease. China disease. Okay. I will not, I am not a person who will recommend people, he, only if you get IIT, you become the brightest. And I don't think IIT is the end of the world. Even any normal college, normal place in this world is very good. But internet gives you a lot of opportunities to learn. And any subject you want to learn, there are a lot of teachers who can clarify the doubts. You should have a great ambition in life and look at great things. Don't, don't imagine um, uh, Srinivasa Ramanujam become a great mathematician because he studied in uh, IIT or IAC. I, I don't think the great inventors in this country were outputs from uh, IITs or I, uh, IASs. We have seen a lot of people who passed IIT but they become useless in the society. Because they, what they should do is they should get to know what is the society, what they want. You know most of the people who pass IIT, there is a beautiful TV program which is produced by I think American television or British television. They print what India imports to America. What India imports to America. Or what India exports to America from India. Because they produced in America, they wrote what India imports to America. If we are talking from India, we should ask what India exports to America. I keep saying most of the IITNs, generally BTEC people from most of the institutions, they are all Gandhians. You know why? What is Gandhi? Mahatma Gandhi. Once he told, eh, Mahatma Gandhi is the person who spoke quit India. So what do you do? People who pass IIT, they quit India and go to abroad. So what is IIT BTEC? Quit India. Correct. <laughs> so do you want to prepare people to quit India or to live in India? So we don't want. Actually, that's a big bogus program which is happening. I, academics and education system has become a factory. So don't miss quota factory. Don't miss cheat India. Don't miss that interview which happened. But one way they are supporting because they are the CEOs of big companies. IIT has got a big alumni. They think that they are the brightest, so they rule the country. They get a big salary. Got it? But I don't think they have changed the world by investing that much money. They did not contribute a lot to India's development. That is one of the biggest problem. Otherwise, IIT alumni, IAC alumni would have become, many people have become judges, many people have become IAS. We should be proud that you know, we have such an institute who created India has become the greatest nation because of those people. I don't think they have not done anything much. Most of the people who are controlling in politics, they are not. The, the uh, people who work into great economics development in this country is not from such people. But uh, uh, I have seen many of times that the, uh, that, uh, the person who had uh, completed his degree of IIT, after completing that degree, he is working in uh, any personally, I am talking about my experience, that he has completed IIT from IIT Rodriguez. Uh, then now, uh, from last two years, he is working in uh, J.P. Morgan company and uh, he is thinking to go abroad and uh, for, her, for his further studies and then he might settle over there. So, what the things and this is why he is doing this. Because he is saying that most of uh, his, uh, you know, colleagues or his, like the children, those who uh, educated with him in IIT, they all have the same planning that we all have to go to uh, America or like, there are some countries, some common countries that we used to listen on the time. And after coming, all of some of them had already gone, and some of uh, those who are left over here, they are planned to go there. So, of course, this is something, this is really what we are exporting to America. We are developing a sense of the strategies, a sense of, uh, we are developing an idea for better India. But after that, we export uh, that idea to America for their betterment, for their, um, uh, as you can understand. With this, I uh, I have just few questions. I will not take your more time. Uh, one thing is that, is there anybody who has inspired you, like your like person who inspired you, or you are taking anybody as your inspiration? 
I should say a single word. When people go abroad and then do a lot of things, it is not a bad thing. Even for my PhD and after PhD, I had an option to go to Canada. But I did not opt to that because I want to live in this country. But when I visited abroad, I found that you know, there is nothing wrong in going to abroad and then uh, living there because the standard of life is different. And the sincerity of people who are learning is good. You have a freedom there. Here it is all polluted and then politically polluted, environmentally polluted. Everything is bribing. Uh, the value for your knowledge is not acknowledged. Therefore, people feel it is a better place to live. But we have a responsibility to change this world. And that is the motivation which I got from reading from Arabindo, reading from Mahatma Gandhi, reading from great people like Swami Vivekananda. So I am a person who was a great reader at some point of time. Today I don't read that much. But all that reading has helped me to make a my own concept. And who inspired, I cannot say one single person. Because when I read about physics, Albert Einstein was a great man. C.V. Raman was a great man. When I read about mathematics, I know many mathematicians who influenced me. I, there were a lot of books which my brother used to give it to me, which are all great scientists in mathematics, great scientists. I read most of their life practices. So, starting from maybe the greatest Aryabhada to Srinivasa Ramanujam, in between lot of western mathematicians. All of them were my role models. So that's how I got love towards mathematics. So similarly the writers from my mother tongue all the poets. The other day I was talking to my plus one plus two time a teacher who taught me Malayalam poetry. I was remembering and telling him when you used to come to the class and then chant slokas. I used to buy heart to them so that I can tell oh last week you taught this and this is where you have to start the next stanza. I used to buy heart and sit in the classroom. Same way I used to buy heart all that I translated to Macbeth when I was a student in 11th, 12th. So I like to learn subjects. Therefore, when a mathematics teacher comes, he was my role model. When a chemistry teacher comes, he was my role model. When a language teacher comes, he was my role model. And Indian great uh, heroes were my role model. I loved almost all of them. I think a agglomeration, a collection, a mix or a uh, jam which is created out of all these great role models I created my own model and that is what I followed when I look at everyone I think oh this is great I love that that's why my learning different subjects also become interesting so I love historians I love geography people I love all that great kings who ruled this country it doesn't matter whether it is a Mughal or a Hindu king all of them have become done a great thing no so I keep saying, oh, if I was a great person, I would have made Taj Mahal. But how can I make Taj Mahal? Because Mamta is not with me. Okay, assume that I got a beautiful Mamta for my married life. Then I will think, oh, how can I build Taj Mahal if Mamta is not dying? Correct? So, <laughs> you keep thinking, putting the you yourself into that role and start imagining. So when I read a drama, when I read Bhagavad Gita, I think I am the Krishna. When Arjuna is asking question, I will think I am the Arjuna. Right? So I make a lot of roles. I love drama. I love dance. I love music. I love films. And I, I, I keep myself putting into their shoes and then start thinking about them. That's what I do. So when I read Shakespeare's I will become Shakespeare. When I read uh, Wordsworth poetry, I become the poet Wordsworth. So I was also, I mean, a, a fascinated reader. Otherwise, I cannot write a lot of books on um, uh, poetries like this, right? This is my poetry book. So how do I write poems? Only when you're fascinated about a poem, you become a poet. And most of my writings are L-I-F-E. So what is passionating to me, not to people. I am passionate about L-I-F-E. What is life? Live in full enjoyment. What is life? Learn in full enjoyment. What is life? Learning is an investment for future earning. So I keep saying, you learn and then start earning. Now, 
uh, Aishwarya is, uh, Pratap Singh is telling that no, I don't waste a lot of your time, don't take, I, I am ready to spend as much time as you want because I am not selling my time for money. For last 12 years, all my lectures, all my discussions are free of cost. I did not charge any one of them. I don't charge any of my lectures. But before that, when I wanted money, I used to make 1 hour, 1 lakh rupees also. For 1 hour lecture, I got 3 lakhs rupees also. Right? I stayed in the best hotel in this world, probably. They gave me the best accommodation. I was one of the most paid uh, public speaker. But then I thought it's all not required. Because what do I do with money? I want somebody like Aishwarya Pratap Singh as my son, my student, who wanted to talk to me at least for some time. That's a bigger recognition than maybe 1 lakh rupees what I get. Right. Thank you. This, this, means, this really means a lot, yeah. uh, what you had said. And this... Uh, um, what, uh, how Gita inspired you? Uh, like, uh, so many of how Gita inspires you? And how Gita can inspire me and any uh, or any anybody else. See, I will give you an entirely different answer which no religious people, no spiritual people will give you. Right? Which we will remember forever as a message and that has to go to most of the people in this world. I will tell you Gita is not a great book. I don't think anybody will tell after teaching Bhagavad Gita under United Nations NGO. I just finished teaching Bhagavad Gita one level one course last week. I taught in America Bhagavad Gita. And every sloka by sloka I interpreted that's available on my YouTube. By chapter wise brief, in, brief teaching is also done. Lot of tidbits from Bhagavad Gita taking slokas and messages also I gave. But today I am telling you a different uh, reason why Bhagavad Gita is great. I keep saying Bhagavad Gita is not at all an important book. There is another book which is called the Uttara Gita. After Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, after Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita is a big book. This is Chinmaya Swami's book. Right? This is Uttara Gita. Very small you can see. There are only very few slokas in which one of the question what Arjuna asked is, just at the time of war, you gave me a lot of knowledge, which is supposed to be the essence of Upanishads. Upanishads are questions discussed between the master and the student after learning Vedas. So it is essence of Veda, which guide like a question answer preparation for examination is Upanishads. And that condensed in a tablet form is what is Gita. Which Arjuna did not understood anything. Because just before examination, if you start teaching somebody, they don't understand. At the time of war, if lecture is given, what Arjuna will understand? So he did not understood anything. So after the war, again he asked me, can you tell me Bhagavad Gita? I want to listen to that again. You know what Krishna said? Don't waste your time. It is not required now. Finished. So, Bhagavad Gita is only when you have a real problem, how to face it. When Arjuna was in Arjuna Vishada Yogam, Oh, I don't know what to do. Should I fight or not to fight? What will happen if I fight? They are all my relatives. If I fight, they will die. What will happen to their wives? Lot of soldiers will die. They are all gentlemen. Their wives did not do any mistake. They will all become husbandless. What will happen to the society? So many questions are asked. If such questions are not asked, Arjuna was not in confusion, conflict, vishadam, shocham. The word used is shocham, dukkham, sadness. What Krishna said, ashocha nanya shochastvam, don't be sad. The first sloka is not Bhagavad Gita chapter 1, chapter 1, first sloka. 
actually bhagavad gita is what bhagwan sings is called the bhagavad gita so actual bhagavad gita start in second chapter 11th shloka and there says ashochya so how is bhagwan starting don't be sad so bhagavad gita starts with a shloka called don't be sad and where is it ending 18th chapter 66th shloka what does it say sarva dharman parityajya mamekam sharanam vraja aham twa sarva pabebhyo moksha ishyami ma shucha so what is the last word in bhagavad gita don't be sad what is the first word in bhagavad gita don't be sad so what is bhagavad gita saying don't be sad so what is bhagavad gita don't be sad so if somebody is sad bhagavan says don't be sad who is sad arjuna why arjuna is sad because he had lot of questions who is having questions students should have questions and what master will tell don't be sad i am here with you i will support you so definitely, so, definitely. so what is bhagavad gita a student with lot of questions going to a master master says all your questions i can answer don't be sad that is bhagavad gita so is it not required for every time in the world for everybody so bhagavad gita is not because of krishna bhagavad gita is because of arjuna so who is the hero in bhagavad gita arjuna is the hero in a classroom who is the hero student is the hero not the master if aishwar chauhan pratap singh did not ask me questions can i give an answer no not at all if you are not in front of me can i do something in my life no no definitely you can so the master is useless if there is no student yes so what am dr tps hunting for dr tps is hunting for good students <laughs> definitely if there is a if there is a good arjuna krishna will come that is what krishna says when whenever there is a requirement i will come that's what he said whenever there is a requirement i will come so requirement should come this first is, that's bhagavad gita this is, this is really very amazing yeah. as we all know this is the last day of 2021 Uh, and we are connected here so what is your message to the people around the globe because our audience is just not from india from so many uh, from uh, also from so many of the foreign countries so what is your message yeah my message is same globe? my message is same what i just stopped in bhagavad gita 2021 we have big problems who doesn't have problem when you don't have problems every day there are problems when there are problems don't get worried what is to be done when there are problems you must become stronger if the river is very smooth you can swim peacefully if the river is very rough you need more energy so actually these are all testing your ability to test and do good things and great things in your life i am sure you can do better and better you can make your life much better when there are problems so every problem is a challenge it's a test like an examination after studies so 2021 was a great study time everyone in this world realized see i got lot of trophies lot of awards lot of certificates and i used to travel 300 days per every year different countries around the world but everything is gone what do i do with my trophy kept in my showcase who is there going to come and see because no visitors comes nobody will visit somebody's house right so what do you do with your great trophies in this world it's all useless now you have a guest, three bedroom guest rooms are there no guest comes to your house so what is the purpose of all this so you understand there is lot of things which we have to learn in this world nothing is important what is more important is the connection contact love care share knowledge which you can spread if that can be done anything in this world is useless for you 
so we need to understand the value of knowledge we need to understand the value of time we need to understand what is life and if you can understand life this is the right time to enjoy or every time is the right time to enjoy it's all in your manas as you think the world is good today i posted my video on joy and the peace joy and the peace that's my message for 2021 the moment the today 31st december 2021 is a very great memorable day for me because aishwarya chahan pratap singh interviewed me and we had a dialogue right same same and same next year. year next year if the same telephone number with which you are contacting me on whatsapp is available definitely you will get a message saying last year this day you were with me and i keep sending message to people who were all with me for last 10 years before that i did not had contact number and all that so i have got more than a lack of contacts in this i keep on reminding them 10 years back 2 years back 3 years back this day we were together definitely got it so that memory makes us live and happy in this world so keep always be happy live enjoy my my last i would say uh, this as a last question how dr t p shashi kumar has seen this pandemic what are your views and your opinions about the pandemic that has passed and whatever is happening plus the new variants that are developing so i would like to understand your view and your opinion over the top for last 10 years i must have given lot of lectures went around the world but last 2 years i have seen more number of people contacting me i have reached out to large number of countries in the world than what i could do in 10 years so i think covid has given great opportunity if you are digitally active technologically active and if you have people around you earlier i cannot be in kuwait the same day i cannot be in bombay so today morning i can be in bombay afternoon i can be in kuwait next i can be yesterday i was in philippines and morning i was in one place in hyderabad day for yesterday i was next week i am going to be in nigeria so every day different countries different people are interacting is it not a great thing what you got out of covid and every time what happens is when every creature like small microbes microns bacteria virus everything has got a small life span it doesn't have a large life span so when it develops it develops into a peak then comes down in between there can be waves everything is electromagnetic waves life is also like that so i think the third wave by the time every people either they got injected or not injected there is a natural mechanism of immunity which comes in each one of us and that immunity will show even second wave third wave third time you are hit me yeah it will not affect me that bad so i think now the third wave impact on human being will become less impact on human being will become less but because of the covid many people went but i don't think covid is the biggest problem in this world today poverty is the biggest problem more than 10 times 20 times in any of the country if you look at it more number of people are dying with poverty no food than died with covid but we don't talk about the poverty because rich people are not dying because of poverty whenever rich people prestigious people and such great people die with of some problem we will talk about it in the news if there is a air crash and 300 people die that will become a big news but every day in india more than 300 people are dying with a lot of poverty no food children by birth are also dying we don't care them because when you fly and die it is becomes a news if you die on the ground it is not a news so similarly covid is not a big problem in the world more than covid you take the statistics and see more than covid every day people with the poverty are dying so is that a big problem or this is a big problem 
so why do we why do we talk about this makes business that doesn't make business you understand in the whole world 98% of the people are poor 2% of the people are the richest of the richest what covid has given lot of pharmaceutical companies made a lot of money so here real estate makes money pharmaceutical company makes money business people makes money amazon makes money baba makes money everybody makes money the difference between the poor and the rich became too bad that is one of the concern which i had the richest people had internet connection they could connect to the world and talk to people like i was telling i could connect to large number of people but assume i am in a small village in my village if i would have been there internet connectivity is very bad electricity is not there there is lot of flood there is lot of problems they are disconnected from the world so i believe 90% of the people suffered because internet is not there schools are not there now you see in andhra hyderabad city telangana 10th class 11th class 12th class exam did not happen they are all passing 10th and 12th they will all join graduation also so it is not a bad thing without examination people are passing so education has gone down young people like age 3 to grade 3 lkg ukg nursery students they don't have internet they don't have online classes they don't have lkg classroom nursery classroom they are all inside their houses so they don't have societal contact their psychological sociological impact is going to reflect when they grow so there are lot of lacunas which are happened i am concerned about it i kept on discussing i wanted to make a new education system to support them all that trial i did i spoke to lot of people on this concern shared it all this has happened so it has got good and bad that's a balance i pray i wish everybody becomes connected to the other people and then getting contacted communication becomes better and world becomes much more peaceful and joyful that's what i did uh, dr shashi kumar my uh, my one request is that i would like to listen your favorite shloka from uh, from yourself like i would request you uh, to please uh, speak one of your favorite shloka so it will be very uh, melodious for all of us your favorite one i don't think it is it is going to be melodious i love everything because all my poetry is i love one of the poetry which i will tell from this poetry book life of love i opened the bhagavad gita thinking that i will tell you but then i thought i should use my own poetry right why should i quote bhagavad gita i thought see i keep telling in this bhagavad gita the first poetry is called race for birth it says millions of sperm from the father get into the mother's egg millions of sperm from the father get into the mother's egg and only one sperm take birth and that's me how many sperm did not take birth millions who are they my unborn brothers and sisters instead of me they would have taken birth so i took birth because i ran faster and i am the sperm who joined with the egg and i got birth is it not great to take a birth by competing with a lot of my unborn brothers and sisters so what aishwarya and everybody who listens to that should do is lift your hands lift your hands aishwarya and take it back and say well done well done well done well done every day morning make yourself say well done i am great i am great i am great okay so be proud of your birth when you are proud of your birth and you think that i am writing examination i am a big failure think about this then you will feel i fought with millions of unborn brothers and sisters so i am the winner so what you should say the race for birth who is the winner i am the winner each one of us are winner so there are many 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 shlokas i love so much there is one um, one one playlist in my youtube which is called subhashitam subhashitam is take small shlokas from sanskritam sanskrit explained the meaning 
and there is another book which is written by me nitya sloka every day which are all the slokas which you have to chant and i like to have lot of group of people who learn this and then practice in life that's what i did so i like lot of slokas that's that's really been very amazing a uh, few days uh, i i could say few weeks before uh, you have posted something on a facebook account that's uh, that's also a meeting which you are uh, uh, the speaker and the thing that uh, that directly uh, touched up my heart that's uh, that's a concept related to buses like uh, if you uh, like uh, there are so many buses and you are standing on the bus stand and uh, the bus which is in front of you if you get into it then that's good but don't feel bad because there are another uh, hundreds of buses so uh, they uh, they are waiting for you so uh, the buses are like different opportunities that will lead you to, to a better future and that's really amazing really love you Each and every If Aishwarya was with me, Aishwarya Chauhan Pratap Singh was with me, I would have kept your head here, hugged you so much and kept my hand on your head and then said, love you so much. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. This, you. A, this is a book available on internet. You can download it. Yeah. All my books are freely available on my website. This says my philosophy. Okay. Grow like a tree and fall like a river. Every one of us can yeah. do much better. Don't keep stop. Keep learning every moment. I love you because you are a yeah. good, good learner who listen to most of and you remember once you miss a bus you get lot of buses. <laughs> once you get into a bus you miss lot of buses. So great yeah, philosophies. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. See you sometime soon. Your parents are so much blessed because a person like you is taken birth with them so your parents must be proud proud of you so my regards uh, thank you very much your words your words really mean a lot my my regards love where are you actually um, ayushir chauhan i am currently settled in gwalior madhya pradesh yeah uh, the city of hasan I, uh, I, uh, i think you may know i know i know but i keep i keep saying your madhya pradesh will have always hunger but when your uttar pradesh has hunger you get lot of knowledge madhya pradesh has got <laughs> hunger you get lot of food <laughs> definitely that is so thank you uh, love you god bless you thank you very much if i ever get a chance to have you another time 
then you are my one of the first priority i have any to any point of time you don't have to wait just a whatsapp message for anyone for just on a yeah. whatsapp message i am with anyone in this world that's my guarantee yeah. that's you, my guarantee if you if you ever visit to gwalior please just to call me i'll uh, i would like to see you any time whenever definitely whenever. definitely we'll if keep you have no plan then do plan to visit gwalior we will we, we will have a lot of we will make yeah. we, we will make some visits yeah do visit and be with me sure thank you very much for joining thank god you. bless god bless pranams many children will ask me for some doubts then i will say i will send my g meet and then we meet every every day i do that for last 600 days i have uploaded more than 2000 videos oh almost average to really yesterday yesterday i uploaded six videos today morning i uploaded one every day without a break for last 600 700 days that's really amazing